Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning is a solid fun action flick that knows exactly what the audience wants and is unapologetic in giving it to them. It has massive car chases, lots of fight scenes, and of course, just like every other Mission Impossible, it has tons of Tom Cruise running around. This film is over 2 hours and 43 minutes long and you wouldn't be able to tell as the time just flew right by. This wasn't the boring and miserable slog that Indiana Jones was. No, this was actually a well-paced adventure that makes you happy you spent the time and money watching it. The action set pieces in this film are great and what's so good about them is that they are not a CGI mess that you couldn't give a fuck about. No, they are for the most part real stunts done by Tom Cruise himself, either because he has got the biggest balls on the planet or is absolutely fucking insane, though my money is on both. He also doesn't rehash old stunts from previous movies, but tries to actually invent new ones to shock the audience, which no doubt plays a large part in keeping the Mission Impossible franchise fresh, as every film feels different from the last one. Tom Cruise seems to be one out of a handful of people in Hollywood who actually understands what the audience wants. They don't want to see their hero be a defeated, pathetic loser who is only around to be replaced by a younger, cheaper actress. No, when they go to see a Mission Impossible movie, they want to see Ethan Hunt doing cool shit, fucking up some villains and watching him run the entire time. Now what surprised me going into this was how many genuine comedic moments they have, particularly during their chase scene in Italy, that I did not expect and even managed to get a laugh out of me. It also manages to balance moments of levity with serious ones as well that carry actual weight and were enjoyable to watch. Then there's the soundtrack which was good at getting the blood pumping, the cinematography is fucking excellent, and the locations this film takes us are absolutely stunning. So much so that it almost makes you want to go and book a holiday just to visit these places. Now Tom Cruise is 61 years old and he is doing insane shit that people a third of his age can't do. He's ridden helicopters, ran outside of buildings and held onto a plane without a parachute. And this movie's no different, he's jumping off of mountains, parachuting onto moving trains and running across airport rooftops. He has been playing the character of Ethan Hunt for 27 years now and what still makes Ethan such a good character after all this time is that although yes he is a super spy capable of doing some insane shit but more often than not he is completely out of his element winging every situation he finds himself in and simply doing the best he can. It's something everyone can root for as he only makes it through mad situations by sheer grit alone. Alongside Tom Cruise, the returning cast of Simon Pegg, Rebecca Ferguson and Ving Rhames are back as well and they continue to do an excellent job as members of Ethan's team. Rebecca Ferguson in particular is the highlight of the group as her character has much more impact in the story than the others, but as a whole the entire group is likeable and they come across as genuine friends. The newest addition to the cast is Hayley Atwell. She is a very clever thief who takes the wrong job one day and ends up on a collision path with Ethan Hunt. When we first see her, she is full of confidence and is self-assured in her abilities to get out of any trouble. But as the shit hits the fan and people try to kill her, she loses all of that and becomes vulnerable, which makes her turn to Ethan for help. Now, because the writers have allowed her to be weak and vulnerable, that you begin to sympathise and eventually root for her as she grows as a character. She is not the typical strong independent woman who is only there to show Ethan that girls can get it done but is actually the opposite and because of that she feels like an actual human character that is out of her element and is struggling to stay alive. She is well written and likeable and it also doesn't hurt that Hayley Atwell is easy on the eyes. Mama! Next up we have the villains, the first of which is Gabriel, who is played by Isaiah Morales. He is a ruthless psychopath and has a history with Ethan Hunt. He works for the AI that everybody is after. Now because the AI can predict many different futures, he is always one step ahead of everyone. Sometimes this comes across as unbelievable, as he is able to know exactly what is going to happen and always shows up at the right moments, which can feel a little contrived at times. It's a minor issue with the character, but the sinister nature that Isaiah Morales brings to the character does a good job elevating the villain. 
Pom Clementif plays his enforcer. Now, despite the fact that Pom is not very big compared to the men she fights, she is very agile and fast and can actually do the fight choreography well. So it's not embarrassing to watch her fight men much bigger than her, as she, at the very least, can do the movements required from her, and the fights she is in are very well done. And finally, we have the Entity, the super AI that everybody in the world wants. It's not exactly a character, but more of an ominous presence behind the scenes, playing mind games with our heroes and leading them into traps. The Entity is represented as an eye that is always watching you. It knows everything about you and everything you are going to do. Whoever chose this design no doubt took inspiration from HAL in the 2001 Space Odyssey movie. Although comparatively, it's much less of a character compared to HAL and more of a force playing in the background. So I'm going to give a brief overview of the plot. If you don't want to be spoiled, click to this time ahead. The film centers around an AI called the Entity that has become so advanced that it has achieved sentience. Now, the AI is so far ahead in terms of technology that it's basically unstoppable in its hacking capability and can take control of anything that is digital. So naturally, every country on Earth wants to take possession of it, but every attempt to do so fails. The only way this can be achieved is if they can get their hands on the AI's original source code. The problem is that the source code is located on a sunken Russian submarine that is somewhere in the middle of the ocean. And what's worse is that to access the machine that has the source code, you need two special keys that combine together to open the lock, to which almost no one knows the location of. So once again, Ethan Hunt and his team go rogue against the wishes of the IMF because they view controlling the AI as too dangerous, so they seek to destroy it. This makes them public enemy number one as they are attacked by both the American government and Gabriel, a man from Ethan's past who works directly for the entity, who is also after the keys. So it's a race to see whoever can get their hands on both keys and the location of the submarine. The chase eventually has them running into Hayley Atwell's character, who was hired to take the keys to the White Widow in Venice. Once she has both keys, she ends up joining Gabriel out of fear from the entity. Now this causes a massive fight to break out, and the AI ends up distracting Ethan, whilst at the same time Gabriel attacks and almost kills Haley. but she ends up getting saved by Rebecca Ferguson, who is murdered instead. Feeling guilty for her death, Haley decides to stop being selfish and help the group get the keys back. She does so by infiltrating the train and stealing them from the White Widow. Ethan ends up parachuting onto the train and this all leads to a big showdown as both Ethan and Gabriel fight each other on top of it. The fight ends with Ethan stealing the keys and leaving Gabriel with a lighter that secretly has a tracker inside of it. The train is then derailed by Gabriel, which causes Ethan and Haley to scale the train as it fails in an impressive scene. The film then ends on a cliffhanger. Haley Atwell's character joins the IMF, and Ethan, with the possession of the keys, now knows the name of the submarine that sank. So that was Dead Reckoning Part 1, a fun action film, and even though it ends on a cliffhanger, Part 2 only comes out next year, so it's not too long of a wait for the sequel. Now, if you want to walk out of a cinema not having a fucking headache from wasting money on watching a shit film, then Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning might be for you. Before I go, I also wanted to point out that it seems to me the age of superheroes is over and we have returned to watching action movies again. This year alone, we have had John Wick 4, Extraction 2, and now Mission Impossible. And even still, we have Expendables 4 and the third Equalizer movie to come out as well. So if action movies are the next big thing, and if they maintain this level of quality and fun in them, then I am definitely more than fine with it.